What's going on? Welcome back to another episode. Tonight, we're going to get started on the diff. That is it there. I pulled it all the way out of the car. We have all the bits and pieces back ready to make this diff go back in finally. So, um, I've got brand new diff center. I'm going to show you that in a second and, and axles and all sorts of goodies. Everything was basically beyond repair, which sucked greatly, but I am glad I took it to someone else to do it. Um, it needed the whole lot rebuilt. Now, I wasn't originally going that far. I was just going to put some new bearings in it and freshen it up and put it all back together with a new pinion seal and whatnot. So, anyways, I'll show you that in a second. Let me spin you around and show you what we're up to here on the diff. Right, so I got the whole entire housing out of the car. That was easy enough done because it was pretty much totally disassembled. I've cleaned all the inside of it out. That was a bit of a job too. And I just drilled a monstrous hole in the top of it and tigged in this little drain bung thingy. So I've got this little drain bung here. These are a Nissan drain bung for uh, patrols and Navaras and stuff like that. I really should get the part number for it. They're such a great little unit. They're not really expensive. This is a little fella right here actually. Here you go. They got this little magnetic filter on the end of them, which I like. Uh, so that'll be the drain bunk. So when I put it all back together, it's going to take a couple of oil changes to get the new diff broken in. So that's going to allow us to drain the oil back out nicely. It's going to be very, very convenient. Okay, good a good job of doing painting this. So I painted all this in the car, and the only bits I missed was literally where these straps go on. I did a pretty good job. Give myself 10 points for that. Anyway, like I say, inside's nice and clean. There's an owl hole in it. Look at that. That's going to let a lot of oil out real fast, but that's, you know, that's what we want, right? Let's go have a look at some other so pieces. We went over this in a previous video for the, the rear end, but I now have all the boxes of all the bits. I think I went through it and I didn't have drums. I've since bought front rotors as well. Um, and we're going to rebuild all the front once we get the back end back together. So, you know, that's it. There's all our yucky old bits in there. Proper nasty stuff in there. Brand new axles. Um... I think I've tried to show it in the last video. The end of this axle where it engaged on my axles was just, you could see the teeth were nearly twisted one over, just on that whole end piece. It was the same on both sides, they were pretty bad. So, new axles, all loaded up with uh, bearings and seals and all that sort of hoo-ha. This right here, this is the money. It was a lot of money. This is my center. All we've reused on this is this housing and this carrier piece. That is the whole thing that we reuse. The rest of it is all rebuilt. We had to even buy a new pinion input PC dealy. So that's brand new. Um, so inside, when I pulled the diff out and had a decent look at it, totally and utterly pretty much had it. This thing has clearly been sitting with a bit of water in the diff and you can see the rust staining on the axles. That I wasn't too worried about because the car has been sitting a long time. I thought, you know, maybe just a bit of surface rust on the axles, that's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, that also correlated to the ring gear and pinion. And then when they tore the diff down, the LSD was the same inside. It was just rust pitted to no end. So, uh, I want to change the ratio of the diff, which I did do. Um, it is now a different ratio. I can't remember what it is. I sat down, did some calculations with them. I'm going to be running a 32 inch tire. The tire I'm going to run on this on a stock rim is a 235 I think 16. It's a pretty tall tire. Big white riding on the outside, it's gonna look really sick. Um, so I wanted to re-gear it so it would also be better on the highway. So like obviously start off with this gear set that I've bought is gonna be a little how you going, but it's a big old F truck with an automatic. I'm pretty sure I'll just pull through that and I doubt you'll notice it much. But it should sit at about 2200 on the highway. That part excites me greatly because you know, screaming down the highway, wasting fuel and whatnot limits the usage of the vehicle. And I don't I want to do some trips, I want to go some places. So I got a gear set that I think should suit what I want to do there. Uh, unfortunately, the only gear set and the only LSD center that I can get my hands on in a quick period of time just happen to be all strange parts. So it's a strange ring gear and pinion, and it's a strange LSD in it. So she was pricey. She was real pricey. But um, there were parts I had. I didn't have to wait. So, And look, they're really good quality parts. There's never going to be an issue with the diff center. So that's what I'm doing. We're putting it all back together. I'm going to wait for that thing to uh, cool down. So it's welded at 95 amps. So she's pretty hot. So I'll wait for that to cool down a second. Slap some paint on that. Um, and then that's all I'm going to do tonight. But this video, I'll just sort of skip through the next stage and so on and so forth. You'll see us loading the center up. We'll stick it back in the car. And now I've got to rebuild all the brakes. I've got everything there to do the brakes. Except the brake line. I've got to rebuild one of the brake lines when I tried to undo it. 
Uh, I had to hold it with a pair of vice grips, and then I crimped the line, and it didn't go so well. Anyway, I'll get a new one of those, and I don't know, let's go throw this thing back in the car. Clean it all up with the wire wheel, get ready to paint it. Just want to double check that this goes in there nicely. Yeah, that's where it's at. It hangs a little low. If this is a four-wheel drive, that'd bother me. Um, I could have recessed it and stuck it up in there a little bit. Being a two-wheel drive, I think that's going to be totally fine. It's going to make it a bit of a bugger to jack off. I was going to put something around there so that I still had a good jacking perch, but I think for the few times we're going to jack off this one point, it's going to be that big a deal. And we can drain oil really, really fast. That's a big hole. So yeah, that'll do us. The diff housing is perfectly clean and ready for reassemble. Just gonna blow out a little bit of air because it's been sitting for a few days. Laid all the original nuts and washers out. Have 10 of those, have 10 studs. So that's what we need right there. There is our diff center, looking particularly good. Shall unpackage that little fellow. And I'm actually going to be using this instead of a gasket. Because everyone told me a gasket's a bad idea. And I know they can be prone to leaking, so even though the gas are one, I have used a gasket and some Permatex. Uh, we're just gonna go straight with this gasket maker on this one. Hopefully that seals her up good, and she ain't coming out again, so no bad cleanup issues. That's someone else's problem in the future. Just wanna shoot some air through it. I cleaned it up really, really well, but it's been a, well, it's been about a week actually since this piece here was done. So uh, yeah, anyway, give her a blow. <laughs> I'll give it a wipe as well just to be doubled up and that lathering. Did a good job of cleaning that up. Did it all while I had it all apart and I was doing the rest of it. It's come up really, really well. It should seal nicely. All right, so I've got a smear on the face on the back side of this, of the main center, and a good lathering on the housing. Remembering my drain bung is to the bottom. My spring perches at the top, we can drop her in. Not the easiest thing to drop in. Here we go. Oh, man. Bam! And I said it wasn't going to be easy to drop in. That is fantastic. That just went straight home. Most excellent. Okay. Yep, mm-hmm. A bit of squish on our hoop all the way around. Alright, we'll put some bolts on I guess. Washers and bolts. Start pulling her in. I have to go digging for my 9 sixteenths. This is a real bugger to get off. Took me forever to find a 9 sixteenths spanner. Which is funny, I do have a really good range of imperial. Just gotta go where I put it. When we move shop so I had all that stuff over to the other shop. And uh, I don't know, I'll put it somewhere. I'm guessing it's somewhere safe, it's usually what I do. So safe, I don't remember where it is. Although we're saying that, there's a whole lot of stuff on the mezzanine floor that I just still don't know where anything is. I thought I packaged it in boxes really well. And uh, I don't know. I'm trying to go to the box where I think I've put something. It's not there. Like every bloody time, it's getting old. Anyways, and who's and how's, we're going to put all these little fellows on, do them up, and uh, we have to work out how we get this in the car. I do have some ideas. I'll show you a new toy I made. So this is the general gist of the idea. I have this plate cut and folded, laser cut, it's a little like top, but anyway. I have access to it to get a lot of stuff laser cut. Hopefully these bolts will just make it through. It's just going to give me a flat platform to kind of line up with that diff. It should give me something nice to jack off of whilst I'm here by myself. And that way, I can manoeuvre it into position. Seems like a solid plan to me. It does have one downside that I didn't think of, is that that can obviously move a bit. Um, but, I've got these bits cut too. I had, had an idea of clamping it to the jack, but... That's, I don't know, I think that's going to work, it's just an idea I had. Uh, so, it does make a nice flat platform all the way to the back now, so I think I might just nip these bolts out. Nip up. 
and uh, get on the jack. It might be a little bit sideways wonky, but it is sitting pretty darn flat on the bottom of this. So it might just be enough to work it and make it stay together for a short period of time. So once it goes like that, yeah, we're gonna give it a shot. I think it'll work. Two up already. Fight. Top one did. Anyway, so it does move a little bit, but um, I think once it comes down that flat and the housing is still exposed partially where the bung is, I don't know. Throw out the jack and see what happens. See if it's a good idea or it's absolute waste of time and effort and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Come on, big girl. Look at this. It's actually working. I don't know how much I want to jiggle it around, but it's working. Come down a little bit. Alright, oh, a bit tippy, a bit tippy. Not lined up. Come on, baby. Come on. About there, I think. I'll come up a scoosh. Oh, lock me jack out a bit better. Come around there and check that one. Just gotta make sure the, the pins line up first. Come this way. Come this way. Alright, yeah, try and put a U-bolt in that. Where are we? Where's that go again? Something like that. U-bolt. Yep, that's how it went. Yep, yep, yep. Come on, baby. Go together. Oh, you're squeezing a bit. Come on, let's do it. Let's do the thing. Go. Oh, should have bought a hammer with me. Impact. It'll be a hammer. Okay. Something like that. I'm well, smart enough to put any C's on everything. Have my nuts laid out ready to go. So I'm just going to put two on this side real quick. Ooh. Come back little guy. Oh, some heavy lifting. Getting that thing onto that jack was bloody heavy. But it is working. So that's good. Okay. Where are we? Just going to come down a little bit on that. That should be us there. Come on baby. I think we're locating. Zip around the other side and we'll check it out. Alright. So far so good. Ooh, come a long way. Here we come. That's a girl. Oh. Get a fucking roll on that. Golly. It's alright, just come out the scoosh. Not bad for a one man show. We'll get her in here. About there ish. Forwards. Bam! Engagement. Alright, let's put some new bolts on her. Alright. We even painted these up. There we go, that one there. Like I say, I've got my U-bolts ready. So they can come up and in. You're just squeezing together a bit, eh? Alright, something like that. Nuts and washers, just reusing the factory hardware here that was all in really good nick. It's not a four wheel drive, so everything was good. Cool, man. Da, 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 da. Uh huh, other side. U bolt. Up you go, little guy. It's home time. God damn, they've sprung. Go in there. They've like sprung apart and they're not going in the hole anymore. So it was the same. Oh, come on, get you in that part. No, 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 no. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. God damn. I'm not that strong, I don't think. Come on. Really? I don't even have a hammer. I think it's a hammer. Generally have nothing. Come on. Um, mm, um, I don't know. What about this? 
This is an inappropriate use of this thing. Get out of there. How did you get stuck in there? What? Ooh, I feel like I needed that. Ha! Triumphant. Lost a piece in the process, but yeah, maybe scratch the paint a little. Anyway, don't worry about that. Cool. Can I ever make sure the other light side is aligned? It's very close. Let's see from here. Do these little fellows up. Uh, we're getting there. All right. I'm just. Oh, hey, I got them way better than I thought. <laughs> oh, look at me go. I don't know my own strength sometimes. Just nipping these the last little bit, just working them. And then once the vehicle's on the road, we'll come back and we'll do it all again. Yeah, that one needs a bit. We'll come back, I'll do them all again after it's been driven. Get the brakes a few times, backwards and forwards. Make sure they're totally seated. They're pretty hefty U-bolt though, so I'm not too worried. Ugh. Yep, that's really nice. And he sees all these threads too, so she'll all come apart again one day if it needs to. We'll put some black paint on that, and she'll be good. Do the same on the other side. That's the diff back in. I'm going to move the car stands to back underneath it, and feel safer there. I sort of lowered the whole thing just so that we could get the, um, oh, just so that we could get the whole thing down low and enough to jack that diff up so high. So I'll move them car stands back, uh, and then it's on the brakes. Let's put some brakes together. We are now up to the stage where we can start putting some stuff back together. Rear ends back in, uh, which is nice news. As we saw in the previous video, I went through and I cleaned all this stuff up, although it's covered in bloody dust from sitting around. It's been a couple of weeks. Um, so, we've got this piece is all repainted, and a few of these pieces here too. Our lever arm for the handbrake, and the handbrake tie bar, I believe you call this little fellow. So they've all got to go back in. First things first, we're gonna need our new slave cylinder. Now these are left and right specific. So, um, the best thing to do is your bleeder always goes to the top. And this little guy here just has to line up with the back side of the diff, because that's where the line comes into him. Um, I've got my old one here to verify that I have the right one. So they're both the same. This is the correct one for that side. I kept everything in boxes to each side of the car. So that's gonna be that little fellow there. He is very easy to install. He literally just goes into here. The rubber's just got to squish past that point. Jam him down in there. Flip him over. Hold him up on there. Come on, little guy. There we go. Reuse the old bolts. You can buy all new hardware for this part too if you really want to get carried away. I, um, I thought about it, and then I did not buy it. It would have been nice, but this was already costing a large amount of money, so I've replaced pretty well every part of this rear end. So just make sure that's going in right. Yep, that looks correct. It's all looking nice there. Nip him up a bit. Come on, little guy. Just freshly painted it, so it's probably a little tight. Yeah, that's it. I thought it felt like it was a little bit grabby. There we go, till him up, not too tight, just tight enough, it's got little spring loaded washers things on there. So that's us, that there, we can, we can still access this when it's on the car, so that's not a huge big deal right now. Right, next over this side, uh, shoes. Shoes are front and back, they're not side specific, but they are front and rears. Get them out of this packaging here, if you have a look at them. You'll notice that this one here has considerably more shoe on it than this one. You'll also notice this one's a bit thicker. Uh, this one's mildly thinner. Which means the smaller one is our front shoe and that is our trailing shoe or rear shoe. So the handbrake comes in from this side, so my right, uh, which means that they go this way. One there and one there. That's where that handbrake piece comes in and attaches to this, that is the front side. So it goes over the spring, comes up through there. So the first order of business is we're going to have to attach this lever arm to the underside of here. He goes back up in here on that one. Nearly had the wrong one. Thankfully, you can't go too far wrong. There's a series of holes, but they all kind of make sense, and things will only go where they need to go. So 
he goes up into that one. All I'm going to do there is take some anti seize. Uh, you can use wheel bearing grease or something else like that. I just don't have any. It's just some form of lubrication for it, essentially. Let's put a little bit on that. Just a tad on the back side of it. And just make for a much smoother action. So that goes up under the back there. Now I have all new kits for everything. And this part is a little bit tricky, so bear with me. I have a new sprung washer and a new clip. This is the little one he slides in, you fold him over. So I'm going to very... I nip myself with the pliers, you'll know about it, because I will squeal and then wind profusely, essentially, is how that'll go down. So he just goes in. And then all I'm going to do is on there, I'm just going to use the pliers and squeeze the two tabs together. And that's going to retain him in place. Oop. Rotate the arm a little bit to rotate him. Ooh, that's way too much. But it is not going to come off. I don't normally squeeze them that far. Anyway, so that is that. That is our handbrake lever arm. So handbrake cable comes through the, the backing plate. It's going to attach onto there. So that has to be done off the car. So that is that piece there. That is that shoe there. Uh, that piece goes up the top. And then the tie bar goes in there as well. But that we're all going to have to go over to the car and do that on the car. So slave cylinder's in. Handbrake lever is on that means we're ready to go to the car i'll show you what we got going on down there all right so because i don't have any axles in here i'm going to take advantage of that and just put two bolts in just hold the backing plate on uh i forgot to add these on on the bench so i have now done that uh handbrake cable has run in i've run it over the top of the spring it used to run under i've decided they should run over i don't know call me crazy just feel like that's where it's meant to go no, it sits better there. Down here, it's sort of hung and it's ready to get collected. I think that was zip tied or something from memory, but anyway, that's where I put it. It's going over the top. That's all there is to it. Now, this is a tediously crap task that no one has ever gone. I love drum brakes because no one loves drum brakes, basically. So that's that is that. What I'm going to do is just going to put a little bit of anti seize on the wear tabs. It's one of those things in a previous video that we built these back up with a bit of weld, made them good again. Um. I don't know if that's really worthwhile or not, but it doesn't hurt while we're here now to do it because now is the best time. Uh, let's go through some tools real quick. As soon as I finish fighting with, how did you get in there? I don't, I don't understand. It's stuck in there. Get out of there. Um, oh, yep. Okay, so we're good. Okay, so that's that. Um, this thing here. This is a brake tool. It hooks things and grabs things and stuff like that. This piece here, we'll come back to in a second. This piece here, on this end, where's that bit gone? Need one. For demonstrational purposes, I've lost it. Oh shit, I've really lost it. Huh. Anyway, that's where the little retainers go. Let me go grab a retainer. I have seen to misplace them and I need four of them promptly. Okay, so that was on the other side. But anyway, I'm back. You just didn't even know I was gone. So apparently this tool here, is meant to take this little fellow in the end, this way, and drive him into place and twist. Dumbest idea ever. First of all, you can't see any of it, and it doesn't really depress it very nice. Anyway, it sucks. This end here is the only part that you really need to worry about. It helps you lever and grab this to pull the springs onto this clip. That is a cool tool for that alone. Whatever else it does, that is fine. On other vehicles, these two points here would be very handy. So that you can grab something and pull something towards it. Uh, that would also be fine. They also help with dismantling. You can hook onto something and pull the um, the spring and, and hook it. Also totally fine for that. But realistically on an F truck, that's the only tool you need, that end. So, first things first, I need to secure the brake shoes uh, to this little fellow over here. So, I'm going to pull back this fellow here and hook up the e-brake, handbrake, whatever you want to call that and hold the whole show onto the this is where you need five people to help you out put the pin through the back and up in through there uh, I've had to reuse, I've actually used all four of these nice new shiny ones on the other side because my kit only comes with two I've always used a backing one, so we're going to do that I'm going to use a backing one 
Then we have the spring, so we need some more hands. And then your next piece is going to be the last piece, and you can see it's slotted and grooved. So what we're going to do is hold him on there. Now a pair of um, pointy vice grips are way better than pliers. I don't know where mine are right now, so we're going with this. All you got to do is watch the flat of that tang line up with the flat of this tang and push and turn, essentially, whilst you hold the back one in. Push, turn 180 degrees, and try and get it all lined back up again. Like I say, the joys of drum brakes. Anyway, first one's done, so that's a good start. Next up, same thing on the other shoe, so big trailing shoe, small leading shoe. I think I said that right earlier. I don't know. I can do things better than I say. That makes sense. I'm not very good at teaching. Don't really take too much of this to heart. Where is my other pin? There it is. Oh we are. Same thing on this side. Uh, through the back. Through the back. There it is. Cool. Through the back into there. You guys probably can't see this right now. It's literally the same thing as the other one. Let's see if we can drag it around here a little bit. Where are we? Boom. There you go. I'll show you, I'll stand back and show you where I am in a second. Wedged under the truck in the scrap metal bin, because the scrap metal bin is full. And I just can't move that sucker by myself. All those bits on there. Like I say, extra two people wouldn't go astray doing this, but anyway. Don't have that tonight. Try and get you lined up a little bit. About there, about there. Cool. Uh, see, these things happen. I think I fluked that other side. Made it look easy. It's really not. It sucks. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now, this holds everything in position for us. Put this little fellow back up the top before we forget. He goes there and retains those. Like so. Like so. It when we start loading springs, it'll stay there. Now, tensioner. This is our tensioner. It is for the automatic adjuster. Basically, down the bottom here is where he lives. And you have the, you know, tilt is a tad there, sorry. Uh, there you go. Lives down the bottom here. Uh, and this is the auto adjuster. Now, if you look at the video of when I first pulled these brakes apart, uh, none of this actually was here, nor was it functional. Get back there. So, uh, we're adding all this gear back in, essentially. So he goes in there. Get back up the bridge, thank you. Over there. Basically, this is gonna be me fighting with these brakes until they all sort of come together. All right. Because really, until I start loading some of the springs, they just wanna fly apart. No, that's not what I said. Well, it is what I said. Get in there. Go, no. Come on, there you go, over there. Uh, uh, see, this is the joys of drum brakes. They are a fiddly thing. There we go. Oh, now shot that one out. Get in there. What I'm trying to do is just set my top and bottom so I can put some springs in here. And the whole thing will kind of stay together. Why won't that go on there? Golly. Okay. We cool now? No, we're not, but anyway. So let's start throwing some stuff on. We've got our auto adjuster. Which goes right there and then we have a spring for him which is our blue spring it's gonna go underneath there and where is my uh, trusty players is it that one he goes into or is it this one I think it's that one. Oh no I'm totally forgetting what the hell I'm gonna do I think it's that one I feel like it's that one nope that's not even nearly enough tension but then Maybe it's because the top's falling out at the same time. And then this piece here's come out of here. And I've lost the plunger again. Get in there. Wah. Yeah, it definitely goes in the other one. It's not every day you rebuild some of these. I had to, I had to look this up. I'm not even going to sit here and pretend like I know exactly how this works every time. And I've done heaps. There we go. Bam, that's better. Now that just gives us a bit of tension on everything. Now it'll stay together. Get over that ridge, get over that ridge. There we go. Boom. Things are holding together. Next up, oh, this fellow. Get on there. He goes at the back. Tensioning thing. 
it around here. Now, because this moves a little bit, I'm just going to do this. And a bit on this end here too. This is really an unnecessary step, but it does kind of move. So we're just going to use a little bit. On there, like so for the moment. On there, like so for the moment. He wraps around down there. But first, we need you. You are the key to all of this. Where do you go? Yeah. The holes make sense. These kind of, it won't go in it any other way. So, on the back side of there, back around there, come off the bottom again. Welcome to Drum Breaks 101. They suck. No, don't be doing that to me now. Don't rotate that. <laughs> nope, you're not in the right spot. You're over the top of that. Anyway, oh, whose idea was this? Uh, come on, put you on that side then. Maybe you like that better. What I'm trying to do is get this to go on here. So I'm going to put the next piece on. Would you believe it? It just will not have it. So that goes there. Sometimes I'll just sit there. This one, the pressing isn't quite as good. It keeps ripping off the bottom. I need you to go on there. So you can come off of there for the moment. Uh, I'll wriggle with that in a second. Come on. It's going to make a very long video, isn't it? This is basically the art of drum brakes, though, because they really are just this fiddly and annoying. So, with that piece lined up there, why does that keep rotating? Go like that then, if that makes you happy. Now's the only good time for this tool to come out. It goes up underneath there and it's got a ridge in it. And then you just bam, slide it on there, like so. How neat's that? I do love that tool. Okay, I'm not quite lined up down here, but that's okay. I can just rotate that a little bit. Go, bam. I don't know if you can see the bottom here. This bit here. Look at that. Holds tension on it. And then every time you activate your brakes and they go in and out, it just brings up the slack on this little tensioner down the bottom. Cool bit of gear. Uh, right, at this stage, we're going to wrestle the bar in. This guy. Now, the bar has a longer side and a shorter side. So the longer side goes to the front with this spring on it. And the bar locks in the back like that. Now, I should have just enough looseness here. Come on, come on. Just enough looseness here. Ah. To do that, this one's piston go back into there. Boom, boom. Starting to get some tension on that now, aren't we? And that leaves us with this spring here. Is it that hole? It is that hole, I believe. And this is once again where my little tool here comes into play. Hooks onto that edge there. And then slide. Down, makes a big clunky noise like that. Band breaks it together. Excellent! Most excellent. Bars in, springs there. These are both in neatly. This is running neatly behind the back of that tensioner. That one there is in. Both of these pins, pushing rod pins, they're perfectly lined up. We've crimped off our handbrake lever. We've connected our handbrake. The lower part's in, the tensioner's on there. I've pre lubed all the tensioner with NEC, so it's always going to work. Do the backing bits. You bash them backwards and forwards for no good reason, it just makes you feel better. When nothing flies off, got it done! This for its worth is the amount of space I have to work in. The big old bin here is just way too heavy. It is absolutely chockers and I can't move it by myself and the caster wheels, well, they're janky. So yes, this is where I am working down in here. It's quite the tight squeeze. Uh, I don't know if I have enough room from there to there in this space to put the axle in. That's my next dilemma. Anyway. Uh, I guess we're about to find out. Now, on the topic of axles, I have new axles with new bearings. They could have cleaned up the retainer. That's a bit of a bugger. And they reused my old wheel studs. Anyway, whatever. Uh, brand new axles. The end of mine were twisted. We come in here, you can see these splines are all nice and straight. I only had about 5 to 8 mil of engagement and it twisted these splines on the end like halfway between this and the next spline in the V section there. So, new axles it was. And there just so happens to be, you wouldn't believe it, if I go from this angle here, just enough space to put this little fellow in.
Okay, that's looking good. Scooch my backside back in here. Oh, yep. <clears throat> okay, so what I gotta do is get the bearing to start. Like so, nice engagement. And get the backing plate lined up. Just wiggle it in a little bit. Just gonna use the bolts to pull the whole show together. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Let's go. Boom. Just like that. Cool. Run all my nuts back down. Go around. Get it all tightened back up. Now I'm just going to go around. It's like using an old telephone. Rotate it back over to each of these and do them diagonally. I've just been running it down, bringing tension up on it. Seat the bearing all the way home. Which are pretty good there. Now, backing is not quite there actually. Come around a little bit more on this one. I'll get a bigger tool to do this up within a second. Then lucky last all the way over here again. I've just been repeating this pattern until it sort of locks into place. There's that. Yeah, it's solid now. But what I want to look for is as I'm doing it up, I don't want it to get tight. If you look at this, like I can, that sort of unloaded gear arrangement, it's exactly what I'm looking for right there. Nice and loose still. Still got the drag of the diff, which is fine. But that rock back and forth, I suppose, if you call it. That's what I want to see. That means I haven't bound up in the center of the diff and jammed the whole thing together. So, it is beautiful. All right, go grab a big bar, lock it down. Better put some drums on this bad boy. This is our new brake drum, and it came pre painted in black, which is really cool. Go over the shoes. Yeah, that's interesting. I'll go over the shoes. I not any tension wound into them either. That's interesting. Let's, uh,. I'll stop and examine this for a second. So I'm not quite seated at the bottom, the dirty little scoundrel. It's kicked out on me. Come on, there you go. Right. Just make sure my lever arm's still in good spot. Yep. That looks pretty, pretty good. Don't do that. Okay, we should be fine now. Ooh, had me scared for a second then. Let's see how it goes on now. There we go. It's a little bit too much tension. I have to knock a little bit out of it. There we go. I'll pull that off and I'll play it a little bit more. Get the preload right on that. Job done. Well, seats properly and does everything else it's meant to, so happy we got the right parts. Just it's just got a little bit, it's a bit dragging. Yeah. Tell by how much I'm struggling to move it. So I'll just knock it back off. Just have to take a little bit out of down here, I guess. I must just have a little bit wound. Oh, I do too. Put a couple mil wound into that. That's all right. I can back it off. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm just going to get this little guy. Take the pressure off of that. Take the pressure off of that. There we go. All right. That felt well. It moves. So that's all that matters, right? Oh, it feels better already. Yep. Ooh, that's a good amount of drag. I feel like I can probably give it a little bit more than that. Oh, wow. That's remarkably hard to turn. Go with this again. Come on. Come on. Just pop you up a little bit. Go that way a bit. And this is just a matter of being fiddly going back and forth and setting the drag you desire. Oh. I think for initial drag, that's pretty good. There's just a, you just want a little bit of drag, not so that it, you've got to like, uh, to move it, but just so when you move it, you feel that drag just in the shoes on the inside of the drum. So, job done. The drive shaft, this bad boy has been sandblasted rebalanced uh, and we got some new unis front and rear so I'm gonna wrestle this big bear up underneath there he's heavy and long and very awkward and I'm laying on the ground
I cannot wait to have it rolling again so I can put it back on a hoist. Hoist is so much easier. Anyway, I'll wrestle this thing underneath there and we'll get her installed. This is a wrestle and a half. I'll do with that nut. Cool. Boom. New hardware. All rebuilt. Don't lose the end caps or I'll cry. No one wants to see me cry right now, especially me. Come too far to have issues. And they've got more tape here. God, this thing's heavy. Oh, yep. Very smart taping, people. I like that. Okay, come on, baby. Slow and steady wins this race. So we pull the end off of this, we drop a needle roller. We foot. Essentially. Same on this side. Just laying here looking up under the tray. I've not done one of the tray bolts up. It does have to come back off, but still. But I've got them all. Anyway, here we are. Okay, baby, let's go. I've been here. Rotate you. Oh. Oh. Something like that. Come on, let's go back into here. What are you being up on there for? Well, I'll be dipped. Come on, in you go. That's it, like that. Oh man. Once again, it would have been a better two person job, but anyway, here I am by myself. Why does it keep sliding sideways on me? No, that's not cool. Come oh. on, oh, let's go for engagement. Oh. No! Don't do that. I don't need underneath the better. Why oh. not seeing? I'll rotate this a bit more, do I? Oh, now, in there. Let's go. Oh, one side looks good. Oh, yeah, we're in. Oh, right, bang a U-bolt in that. Messed them all up with my arm. Come on, can't see it. Just got to go by feel. Why don't you go in? Especially like to go in. Really? Let me come back a bit. Ah, fuck yeah. There's one. Oh, there was one. There we go. That's one kind of one. Oh, this is not a good job by itself. 10 out of 10, do not recommend this. <gasps> and that happened. Did it go back on properly? Come on. Oh, they both came out. Shit, shit. Abort mission. Oh, they're both on. Oh, I'm in there. That's it. In you go. Oh, man. Do not recommend this by yourself. This sucks. Nearly lost both caps. Get you on there. Come on. In you go. Yep. That's the ticket. On. Whew. What a mission. So big and heavy. Not really a lay on the ground, do a job, easy type scenario, but here we are getting things done. Oh. Cool, excuse does not lead to progress, so no excuses, let's just hook in, eh? Come on. Come on. Yep, looking good now. Last one. And I can sit up underneath here, stress less, and just do the nuts up. Whew, that nearly beat me. So I had to, I just turned the camera off, so it was going to go forever. One of these popped off, it's actually the top one, and one of the needle rollers fell sideways inside of it, and it just wouldn't go back together, so thankfully I was able to pull it apart, put the little needle roller back in where it goes, and get them all seated back home, so that the end cap's seated properly. Nonetheless, drive shaft is in all the way up there. It's dark in that end. Where are we? Seems to get a light up there. No, it can't reach one. Doesn't matter. It's dark. Oh, all right. That's that done. I replaced that brake line too. That was a bit of a bear. I wrestled with it, but it's in there now. Uh, I'm going to do new hard lines for the rear, which I'm not going to make myself because I actually don't have the tool. Uh, I'm going to take that down tomorrow and get someone else to do it. Nonetheless, that is on there. That means that we are ready to bleed the rear brakes which means we can spin the car around and work on the front of the car. So, oh. 
Hello. It is compact under here. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, I got it. Well, I'm gonna sign this video off here. That was a lot of work, but it's coming along really nicely. I'm very, very excited about it. Uh, diffs in, uh, so we got a fully rebuilt center. We've got the new drive shaft, it's all rebuilt. It's back in the truck again. All brand new brakes, uh, and it will be a new brake line as of tomorrow. I won't bother filming that bit. Uh, I'm gonna bleed up the rear end, and then, like I said, we're gonna turn the whole truck around. We're gonna do the whole thing with the front end as well. I don't think I'm gonna pull the I beams out of it, but then I didn't really intend on pulling the whole diff out of it. So I'm not gonna say yes or no to anything right now until I actually get in there and see what's going on. Uh, I'm definitely doing the front brakes, uh, including the brake line and all that sort of stuff. So that's it. I'm busted. I'm going home. It's been a late night. It is another shed night. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of it. I know my brake rebuild tutorial is not great, but I thought I'd give you a rundown anyway and see what you think of that. Uh, yeah, that's us. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again very soon.